Um, for anybody out there who is going through a rough time in their life or whatever, I'm telling you right now, find a way to release by just having a celebration of just being yeah. alive. Just a lot of people are looking for financial, uh, um, I guess like a breakthrough financially. And I understand that, but like, you need to celebrate the breath in yes. your lungs, yes. man. Yes, absolutely. Because somebody didn't that. wake up today, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, yo, like you woke up. I'm like, you should already be like, yo, I had another chance to do this. Um, and that's how that's how I felt at the yeah. party. I was like, "Yo, I have a like." I'm like, "Yo, man, I'm alive. I'm str I feel strong. You know, I feel yeah. good. I don't have. I'm not sick. I'm in good health. Yo, I, let's celebrate." And yeah. I did that, man. I, and the next morning, I don't know if I told you, I went upstairs. Excuse me. Okay, so I'm halfway through before I'm burping. I was already burping before that. <laughs> But she's a burper though anyway. I remember I the am. first time the I first am a burper. The, I don't know if y'all can see it on camera, yeah, but I'm no, like no. suddenly like The dead me. guy ale had, it was cool, but by the time we got to the second drink, she was just like, bah. <laughs> just kinda let, let it go. But back to what I said, oh next the God. next morning in the hotel room, I got up, I went up to the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm talking about they had like egg whites with apple wood, smoked bacon and they had hand rolled sausages and hand picked uh, uh, raspberries. All the raspberries was perfect. I never seen nothing like that. You know, raspberries, the ones on the bottom was all mushed up. Yeah. All of them was like, just a pile of perfect, ra ooh, perfect I like raspberries. I was like, ooh, I love raspberries. I was like, oh my God, this place is amazing. So I'm sitting there eating breakfast overlooking the city. I'm just like, oh, this is so nice. And I go back to the room and they're like, okay, Mr. Shan. They're still calling me Mr. Shan. I'm like, that's tight. You know, that hotel, the decorum. A1. A1. Intercontinental, man. I'm okay, like they treat you like kings and queens mm. around there. Like, yeah, they took my bags downstairs. You feel like you are shit, in a different country. The Obamas, okay? Uh -huh. Like, for real. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, you like, yeah, hey. Okay. Yeah, I really like, like that place. Y'all mm -hmm. took some bomb pictures. I didn't even yeah. see all the pictures until I went on uh, Jeremy's page. I was like, yeah. God damn. So, I get downstairs. I get in the lift. And we get on our way back to the ghetto, right? You didn't tell me. My God, right? So, I'm as I'm getting <laughs> off the freeway, here's a dude with a shopping cart full of garbage. Oh. Now, maybe it's his stuff. Maybe he thinks it's his stuff. I don't know. Maybe he's mentally ill. Um, uh, hopefully he's not. But he got uh, just a shopping cart full of trash. And then I see the prostitutes right on Fig. Because right when I get off the freeway, Fig is right like there. It looks like trash to us. It's his stuff. It's his stuff. It's bro, his stuff. No. Excuse me. I, I apologize to all, you know, because I've been homeless before, too. And I, I'm pretty sure people thought my stuff was trash, I've too. I've seen that before, and I'm like... I had to tell myself, I think it's trash, but they think it's... It's if something. If they pushing that shit around... That's their stuff. That's their stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then I'm just going down the street, and I'm just seeing the graffiti and the dilapidated buildings, and I'm just like, God, it's like, yo, L.A. is a trip. Anybody who lives out here, you would know L.A. is a trip. Like, you, you can go from, like, absolute lap of luxury to complete... Poverty, impoverished Look at ghetto. USC. USC is a perfect example oh my gosh. of that they can fix that shit if right. they want to. That's a perfect example yeah. of that. Let me tell you, I went up to do an audition for a student film at USC, which I will never do again. Um, it, it was just weird. Put that out there real quick. Yeah, I, put it, I will <laughs> never do that again. I, I And I, I don't say that to be arrogant. I. I Please, uh, no, uh, I'll just film my own stuff and my own camera. Anyway, so I go up there and as soon, I'm telling you, I'm coming from the hood. USC's in the hood. <laughs> it really it's is. It's straight up in the hood. Like it's not like, oh, we go to this beautiful, ca it's in the ghetto with yeah. these kids from all over the country thinking that they're, go they're they are going to a very prestigious school, but they go out of their way. And this is why shit happens to people that go to USC and all of a sudden every now and then, Pay attention. Every now and then, there's a news story about something around USC or a person happens because, like, and I hate to say this, but you have naive people 
Because they never, campus. they never grew up in the hood or around in the hood. Don't have no friends. Like they don't know. No. Nope. Literally, they don't know. And nope. you have people who will take advantage of that shit. Absolutely. Because they need to come up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's crazy uh, the size of everything. So I feel like if they can fix that, because when I went out to the campus for the the whole audition thing, right? So as soon as I get on the campus, it's a different world. People riding bikes. I was like, wow. Little white girl, <laughs> how are you here with no fear in the world? Well, there's a cop there, a cop there, there's a cop there, there's a cop there. So, oh, well, you could clean it up if you want to. <clears throat> so, we're driven by financial, <clears throat> excuse me, the corn chips. Sorry, the, the, uh, <laughs> the bugles. <clears throat> Kind of got yeah, they still make bugles, y'all. Yes. They're still around, live and well. Yeah, when I was a kid, I used to grab them and be like, you know, anyway. <laughs> Point I was trying to make is they can fix the hood if they wanted to. There's a reason why they don't. Hidden agenda. <laughs> well, there's, there, we're talking about conspiracies now, right? Yeah. There's don't money. Don't get me started. <laughs> there's, there's money on the back end of poverty. And there's money in keeping you fucking sick. Yeah. Right? Oh, man. So let's not even go there. Man. Well, you got to think about it, right? They got police officers. They got jails. They have the correctional officers. All those staff. And let's just say that everybody's doing, besides doing well. We're not committing crimes. We're, we're sticking to the laws. She they gets, won't have no they jobs. They won't have jobs. They won't have jobs. So... So, I mean, what do you do so there? So, certain right? areas you have to let live, let go, let it do, let it. Yeah, like, just, just let, let it. it. Yeah. So, these people over here can eat. Now, back about maybe 10 years ago, I used to be involved with an anti police brutality group. So, because I've been brutalized by the police, so I was like, oh, so my thing was we'd go out and we'd march every year, October 22nd, we'd go downtown and we'd march against root police brutality. And I learned something from Mother Teresa. Mm. Rather than being anti-something, be pro-something. Right. Because anti just gives power to the thing that you're trying to elim and eliminate. And it's just negative. It's negative, right. Yeah, it's just negative. So I would go out there and I'd be like, yeah, you know, no more violence against people, you know, you know, screw the police, and, you know. And it literally did nothing but made the problem worse, right? So they would get a mark of your face and they'd harass you. So you're talking about protests? Oh, I would go out and protest every year. So do year. you think protest is, is pointless? Uh, I wouldn't say it's pointless. I think that it's good to let your, your voice be known, but um, there's, there's a point where you have to take another route after a while. Because what would happen is, so here was my solution, right? So we protest year after year, and I was like, uh, guys, uh, they're still beating our asses. Um, it's not working. Maybe we should try, like, so my solution was, was to be absent. So you can't beat the air, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just leave. What do you mean leave? And I said, don't, not necessarily move away, but don't hang out on that porch all day for them to harass you, because that's how we ended up getting brutalized, is that we'd be sitting around drinking and stuff. And they'd and, come and fuck And they would come and be like, hey, you come here, or whatever, and they See, put us in the back of the shit. car. You that, should be ooh. able to just chill. You should be able to just chill on your damn porch without being fucking harassed. Right. So what I started doing is I bought a van. Unfortunately, those vans now are considered- I'm uh, sorry, van. They're considered trafficking vans now, so I can't <laughs> own those anymore. <laughs> It's terrible, <laughs> but I bought a van when it was still safe to as own a van. As soon as she said I bought a van, I knew what exactly I what she said. She's like, sex trafficking, you're freaking freak. I was like, oh my freak. God, you're kidnapped. Yeah, right, right, you're kidnapped. <laughs> I used to go, and I, all the neighborhood kids, I would take them, the kids who would be like, they were, I would take them up to Santa Clarita. Oh, that's nice. And there's a rock climbing kind of area called Stony Point Park. So we'd go up there and go, you know, climb up or whatever, and then bring it back home. Like, hey, remember that time we went rock climbing or whatever? Because if we're not there, can't be brutalized. Okay,